Hey everybody, Retro Pie Guy here. Today I'm going to do a full demo and review of this Raspberry Pi 10.1 inch touchscreen display with rear housing. You can see a brief little video right here that's going to preview this particular device. But I'm going to do a full demo both with Retro Pie for retro gaming as well as the Raspberry Pi operating system. So you can see the different functions and features of each of these. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to demo is actually Retro Pie. In here I have the Retro Pie Guy 512 gigabyte game collection card which has over 15,240 retro video games on it. So first thing we'll do is we'll actually jump into a gameplay demo on here, but I wanna first show you what I've done to set this up. So I actually connected a wired gamepad controller to the USB port, which you can see we have access to on the side here. I connected one in here just to set up this Bluetooth gamepad controller from 8BitDo, just because I didn't wanna to have to use a wired gamepad controller for this video. So it is nice to be able to go in and through the Bluetooth settings, set up something like this. Uh, I just happen to think that the less wires, the better. So another couple things I wanna point out here is, obviously we have all the standard stuff that we'd have available on a regular Raspberry Pi setup because everything is still available on here. Um, but we do have some additional settings up here. So on the back side, we have our power button, which will power this on. We have a menu button, and then we just have our navigation buttons here up and down, and then a back button. So the way we would use this is, I'm gonna hit the menu button first, and you'll see that it pulls up a bunch of different menu options here. So we have color, display, setup, and, and we can use those directional buttons in order to navigate through these. So it makes everything super easy and um, you know we can change the volume, we can change the brightness, just a ton of stuff that we can do with this. So um, over here on the side, we do have obviously our power supply, which is plugged into the wall right now. That's what's powering this. We also have our type C port, regular HDMI port, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack here. So I'm going to jump in and do a gameplay demo on here just to show you exactly how well everything works. So I'm actually gonna jump into PlayStation here and we'll jump into a gameplay demo. Um, but we're on Tekken 3, so let's jump right into Tekken 3. All right, so I'm gonna jump right into a quick arcade mode game here for Tekken 3. So you can see here, emulation on here just works perfectly. The picture's great, the volume's great. Everything about this is just perfect. It makes for just an absolutely amazing setup. So I'm actually gonna switch out the micro SD card in the Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna put in my Raspberry Pi operating system, and we're gonna try it out over there and just demo how everything works on this particular setup, using it as a home computer with the Raspberry Pi operating system. All right, so here I have the Raspberry Pi operating system loaded into the micro SD card slot on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm able to navigate on here. You can see that I can move my finger along here and uh, it works just like it would with a regular mouse. I can go into, um, let's go into LibreOffice for example here. 
And again, my finger just dragging it around, I'm able to navigate just like I would on a regular iPad or iPhone. Um, the only thing that's a little funny on here is you don't get a pop-up keyboard when you click on something. So you have to actually go in and add under accessories, you can add in a keyboard and it'll populate in like this. So then you could put in, you know, you could put words in and, and all of that. So um, that's the only thing that's a little funny, but you do also have the option of getting a separate keyboard like this or even a regular full-size keyboard if you want. You would just plug in your USB receiver into the USB port. You can see that that's exactly what I've done here. And in that case, you can get rid of this little um, pop-up keyboard. You wouldn't have to utilize that. I'll actually leave it on there for now, but I would be able to just type in here and you can see I'm typing in and the letters and everything are populating into the bottom there. So it just depends on if you want a keyboard like this or if you want to utilize the built-in one here by downloading additional software through Raspberry Pi's operating system. The other option too is if you don't want to utilize the touchscreen, you can always put in a USB receiver, wireless mouse, or even a wired mouse, again, through that USB port on the side of your Raspberry Pi. So everything works on here just like it would on a tablet or an iPhone. Um, so it is really nice to have all these different functions and features on here. So that's gonna do it for our demo here. Let's jump out and we'll talk about what I liked and what I didn't like about this particular setup. All right, so we went through our different demos here. So it's time to talk about what I like and what I don't like about this particular setup. So first and foremost, let's talk about the quality. The quality here is amazing. The plastic around the housing and everything is super high quality. Nothing is cheaply made in any way. You can see that the picture quality here is just out of this world, super crisp, super bright. There's settings to change the brightness too if you wanna tweak it a little bit. The volume on here, also really great. Um, and I think that's the biggest question when you're purchasing something off of Amazon is, you don't know if the videos and uh, photos in the listing are gonna translate to what arrives at your doorstep. In this case, it, it far exceeded my expectations. Um, just had a lot of different things you can customize about this, but look at that screen. It's just out of this world um, in terms of the picture. Um, the cooling fan case in the back, it's a really nice setup. You have a really large cooling fan in here. Uh, it keeps everything cool. You also have ventilation. So it's a much larger cooling fan than what you have in your typical Raspberry Pi setup if you're just using your you know standard Raspberry Pi cooling fan case. So uh, functions super well. The quality is 100% there. I don't have a single negative thing to say about that. Um, the only potential issue or inconvenience more than anything is you can see here that we have full access to all the ports on the side of our Raspberry Pi housing here, which is typical for something like that. But the only thing is, is the micro SD card slot is located somewhere in the middle there. So you don't have access to that. You have to actually take off the back panel and then take out the four screws that secure the Raspberry Pi to the housing in order to flip it around and swap out the micro SD card. So I do think that that's going to limit you and probably leave you not switching out the micro SD card as often as you would on a typical Raspberry Pi setup where you could just flip it over and have full access to locate that micro SD card slot. Something like this with having to take you know all the screws out and remove the back panel. It sounds like it's a lot more involved than it actually is. I did it in about two minutes start to finish. So it's not a big deal, but certainly is more inconvenient than the two seconds it would take you on a regular Raspberry Pi cooling pan case. So, um, Let's get into the two demos that I did. First and foremost, let's talk about RetroPie for retro gaming. Everything works super well. What I ended up doing was setting up a Bluetooth gamepad controller here. Uh, initially, I connected a wired gamepad controller just to navigate into my Bluetooth settings in order to pair this and set it up. I found that this is just the easier way to do this because with a setup like this where everything's integrated in, obviously the only cable that we have is the power supply cable to the device. So I wanted to keep with that and have less cables with something like this, obviously, I don't have to have a connection from my gamepad controller into the USB ports on here. I did have to have that initial one, whether you use a wired gamepad controller or a keyboard in order to you know, initially connect this and set this up. Um, it makes no difference, but that's what I ended up doing here. I really love that I did that because you know, I can be as far away from this as I want and still be able to play it. I'm not limited by cables and all that. And it just makes for a sleeker, more compact and um, less messy sort of look. So obviously everything on here, since this is 
Raspberry Pi 4 powered. Just works super well. Emulation is just as it would be with any other Raspberry Pi 4. With the addition, of course, of the larger cooling fan here, which is just gonna help you that much more keeping everything cool when you're emulating games, especially those more advanced ones like Dreamcast or N64. Um, but gameplay and everything works really nicely. And of course, that sound quality and picture quality just enhances your overall experience. So not much different than any other setup, but uh, it's mostly gonna be the convenience of just having one cable here and everything integrated into one. So what I have currently in my house is I have a Raspberry Pi here in my office where I mostly just uh, make customizations and, and work on testing things out. And then we have one in our family room, in the living room where we can all play as a family. The only issue with that is, is in order to move that from room to room, I have to break down the entire setup, remove all the cables, Everything's wall mounted in my house. So it, it's definitely a pain to get behind there and the you know, one inch or two inch um, clearance and remove cables and all that stuff. Uh, something like this would just make it so easy to move it room to room. So for the kids that, you know, if you have kids, you know that they're, um, one day they wanna play here, one day they wanna play there, or they're constantly on the move, constantly active. So in order to take this from room to room, it's as simple as just unplugging it from the wall outlet, moving it to another room and you're, able to play in the next room. So if the kids want to play in one kid's room today and another kid's room later today, it's super easy to do that. And you don't have to break down any setups or swap anything out. So I think convenience is the biggest thing here that's going to um, drive people to making this purchase. So let's talk about the Raspberry Pi operating system now. So for the Raspberry Pi operating system, this is where you're going to be utilizing that touchscreen. Um, this is where you're going to be doing either word processing or surfing the web. Um, the only issue that I have, because obviously everything is going to function just like it would on a Raspberry Pi 4 or 400, the only issue is there's no built-in keyboard function on here. So if you go to YouTube, you click on the search bar at the top, no keyboard actually automatically pops up onto your screen. You have to go in and add additional software for keyboards like I did in the video there. And there's a bunch of different ones to choose from. They all work really well. They're just different layouts, different looks and feels. But it's definitely inconvenient to have to go, if you go to YouTube, you have to go to YouTube, then you have to go and open up your keyboard to, in order to type on the screen itself. Easiest way around that is to just use a USB keyboard, either wired or wireless. I showed you in the video my wireless one. It just makes for it being a little bit easier. You can get a full-size keyboard if you're gonna be using this primarily at your desk. Um, that's probably what I would do for this because I, I just didn't think that the on-screen keyboard was that easy to navigate and use. Um, you're using two different windows. It's not automatic like it would be on an iPhone or an iPad. So I didn't, I wasn't crazy about that part of it. So um, all that being said, I think that what I would be using this particular touchscreen device for is retro gaming and just the convenience of having everything integrated into one setup and not having all those additional cables and uh, obviously having the ability to just move it room to room. So you can see here that I already have the Retro Podcast Game Collection card installed back in here and I think that's what I'm going to leave it as. I don't think I'm going to be using this for the Raspberry Pi operating system, although I certainly have that option to swap out the SD card and, and use it that way. Um, I have a Raspberry Pi 400 right here, so I think I'll just use that for the Raspberry Pi operating system um, with the built-in keyboard and additional mouse um, that I have installed through the USB port. I just like that setup better. I like to have that physical keyboard. I'm not really a touchscreen sort of guy for keyboards but I do like the um, convenience of using this for retro gaming, just having it all built into one particular unit that I can just move from room to room. I just think that that is uh, an amazing option and where I'm really gonna be utilizing this particular setup. So that's gonna do it for today. I just wanna walk through this, you know, start to finish and show you all the different functions that you can use on this particular device. So if you found this video helpful, be sure to like the video. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do a whole bunch of different things around retro gaming, um, product reviews, tutorials, gameplay demos, all sorts of stuff. And of course, check us out online on our website, www.retropieguy.com. Thanks for watching.